Information technology has evolved over a period of time. It has gone through very rough phases right from the beginning, let's say 70s or 80s or 90s. There was quite a lot of significant investment done on the IT infrastructure. So if you had to build an infrastructure comprising of five or ten applications, you need to have ten different servers. So let's say for a simple two-tier design, two-tier architecture, you need a web server, you need a database server, you need an LDAP server for authentication purposes, you need an email server, you may also need a couple of database servers, etc. Let's say in that sequence we have 10 servers. In that era, the cost of each server, let's say, is $10,000. So for 10 servers, simple mathematics, we are investing about $100,000, which is a very big investment that could be afforded only by large enterprises or governments. That's how traditional data centers used to work. The problem statement here was that capital expenditure was just too high, which is the total cost of ownership of procuring the infrastructure was very high. And that's why people started investing and doing research on something called as virtualization. In about 2000, the concept of virtualization came in and then we moved away from the traditional data center model where we used to procure physical boxes. We moved away from that to virtualization. Now in virtualization, you still procure physical boxes. But then instead of using that as a single entity, you will introduce another layer called as hypervisor. The hypervisors sit in between virtual machines and the hardware. So on that single hardware, you can have multiple virtual machines and then they can talk to each other and do the business. We moved away from that model to private clouds. Now private cloud is where the definition of cloud kicks in. In the previous chapter, you learned about cloud computing definition. It means that you will have very less dependency on the provider. In this case, the provider is your operations team or the infrastructure team. So the development team who needs to procure servers to deploy their applications, they do not have to depend on the infrastructure team to create the servers for them. In private cloud, the operations team the development team, the QA team, everybody will have a self-service portal where they can log in with their user ID and password. Once they have logged in, they will enter the world of cloud, but remember, it is private cloud. That means that the infrastructure is hosted within the four walls of your office. It is within the LAN or probably in the WAN as well, but still in the office controlled by the office or controlled by that enterprise. That is private cloud. So remember, the private cloud limits are within the boundaries of the domain, so within that enterprise only. We then moved on to public clouds where the entire infrastructure is not with you. It's with a cloud provider like Amazon, Microsoft Azure, or Google. What you will have is an internet connectivity and a simple laptop or a device that you can connect to the provider. So in public cloud environments, you may or may not or may, may not even need any infrastructure in your office. Consider a gaming company and let's say like-minded people may want to play games and you may want to create your own gaming application and you know that to create a gaming application you need very computational heavy a laptop or even a desktop maybe. So you need like 64 GB of RAM and a couple of terabytes of hard disk and that's very expensive. So what you can do is procure such server with the specifications that I just said in the cloud and then you can connect to that server from your Atom processor laptop. Get your job done and you pay for just what you need. That's exactly what public cloud is. So 100% of your resources are there with the cloud provider and that's what public cloud is. In hybrid cloud, you have a part of your infrastructure in your premise, another part of your infrastructure with the cloud provider. So maybe your web application, the front end of your web application is in the cloud 
whereas the database for security purposes I may want to keep it within my infrastructure now that is an example of hybrid cloud let's try to learn about what are the different deployment models like SAS, PaaS and IAS in the next chapter